What is up you guys? This is LEGO Superheroes today coming at you with a review of set 76083, Beware the Vulture. This set has 375 pieces and retails for just under $40 in the US. So let's start off with what I'm most excited about in this set, the minifigures. First up, we have Spider-Man on the left, the MCU Vulture, the Shocker, and of course, Iron Man. So, let's take a look at Spider-Man. So now let's take a look at everybody's favorite web slinger, Spider-Man. On the left, we have the Spider-Man Homecoming version, which was included with the set I'm reviewing today. And on the right, we have the Tanker Truck Showdown Spider-Man, which was released as a Toys R Us exclusive with the Captain America Civil War line. Some of the differences might not jump out at you at first, so I'd like to point them out. The first major difference is the Spider logo on the chest. The version here, which is our Spider-Man Homecoming version, is much more accurate to the MCU, whereas the version on the Civil War is more accurate to the concept art that came out with Captain America Civil War. On the arm printing, the one on the right, which is our Civil War, has just one black armband, and the one on the left has two. As for the back, the Civil War, which again is on our right, has more of a thick bug, and the one on the left is a little bit skinnier. There are some other minor differences, like the black lines on the side of the torso and the web belts, but overall the figures are pretty similar. However, I would recommend picking up a Homecoming Spider-Man just because it's that much more accurate to the MCU portrayal. And now we've got the Vulture, who will be played by Michael Keaton in the upcoming movie. I'm really excited to see Keaton's take, and I think that this minifigure just helps build the hype. I love that the helmet is much more techy than things we've seen in the past, and it uses the Iron Man helmet that we've been getting recently from LEGO Marvel. I also love the white fluff on the jacket because it really harkens back to the comic version of Vulture, where he had all of that puffy white feathers that go around his neck. The bomber jacket looks great, and the pants are just a dark olive green color. Definitely a cool look. On the back of Vulture, he's got some printing here, and he also wears a backpack piece, is what I like to call it, that has two studs, which is how the wings attach, which is what I'll be showing you next. The figure itself is really cool, and when you take the helmet off, it's the normal head that we got with Vulture from the Bridge Battle set. So there's nothing exclusive about this head in particular, so that's a good thing if you're trying to make a custom of this and you already have the other Vulture. The one problem that I have with this figure is I really would have liked to see a more accurate Michael Keaton head, so to speak. It definitely looks like the Vulture. I can't take that away from the figure. But I do wish that it looked more like Michael Keaton so that we had an accurate representation. Next, we've got one of my all-time favorite Spider-Man villains, the Shocker. I don't think that this figure is anything to write home about per se, but I'm definitely excited to have the Shocker for the first time as a Lego figure. He's got a black jacket on that appears to be like a leather jacket with a red shirt underneath and gray pants. The arm printing really throws back to the original Shocker in the comics with that etched-in look from the original 60s comics. He's got a hoodie on the back, and this is a new head. A lot of people were thinking that this was just a reuse of an old head, but as far as I can tell, this is a new exclusive head for Shocker. Uh, underneath, he just has normal black hands there, so if you don't love the Shocker gauntlets, which I'm not personally crazy about, you can take them off and make him look a little bit more average, which is definitely something I appreciate. And last, but certainly not least, we have Mr. Tony Stark himself, Iron Man. I really like this figure, you guys. I didn't think I was going to, but I absolutely love the metallic look of the silver on the bottom of the figure. I love how it's broken up with the red up top and the red boots, but everything else being silver, it is definitely an Iron Man armor that catches your eye, and I think it's gonna look great among your Iron Man mini figure collections. And as you can see, it's like a shiny metallic silver on this figure, which really looks good. That continues onto the back as well. Really a cool look. It resembles the Civil War pattern a lot, but with silver this time instead of being all red. And perhaps the most interesting part of this figure is the head underneath, which is a blue transparent head. Definitely something interesting, and it'll be neat to see how that plays out in the actual movie. 
Now let's check out what I consider to be the best part of this set, the Vulture's Wings. You guys, these wings are amazing. The build is so structurally sound and it was so fun to actually build them. I thought that it would be boring and repetitive since it's basically just a mirror reflection of each side, but the amount of detail and structure that went into these wings just blew me away, you guys. Let me start off talking about my favorite part. These mosaic pieces here are just awesome. I love the way that they interlock and they really look like what we've seen in the trailer so far, which is such a great look. So I'm gonna start on the outside and work my way in for the features. On the side here, all of these wings on the outside move like fingers, which are really cool. They move forward and back on hinges and that works the same on both sides. Then down here, these bottom wings move too. I guess that would be a flight stability sort of thing. And then when you turn it around back, there are these two turbines here that move. Really cool. Those look like where the fans are in the movie that help blow it from side to side. And then there are two flick fire missile guns up top here. So there are a lot of features going on. And on top of all of that, you guys, the wings move in and out on these hinges here. They're on click hinges and they move forward and back. So there you go. That's about how big it is. It is definitely a cool look. The only complaint I have is that they don't really stick on Vulture's back so well. Uh, sometimes they pop off if you hit it a little too hard. But in any case, they look great, and I think that they look very movie accurate from what we've seen from the trailers so far. And now we've got the most major part of the set, which is the van that Shocker is seen driving on the box. It's a pretty structurally sound van. I liked it. It was a fun build, um, but it's just not wowing me. Don't get me wrong, you guys, I enjoyed building it, it's got a great look, but there's just something about it that just doesn't quite do it for me like other MCU vehicles have done in the past. But in any case, let's take a look at it and you guys can make a decision for yourself. One of the things that I didn't care for was how many stickers are on it. Just from looking here, we've got a sticker on the side panel, sticker here, there's a sticker back here, up here, on the window, on the hood, and on the license plate. That is a lot of stickers, you guys. And I love printed pieces as much as the next guy, so my issue is putting on all these stickers. That's definitely something that didn't really do it for me. It's pretty decent in size. As you can see, Shocker's in there driving it now. I love that they gave these mirrors. That is a really cool touch if you ask me. On the back here, we've got a sticker that says, how's my driving? with a call number, but the call number is crossed out and it says shocking. Get it? Because the shocker's driving. Ah ha ha ha. Well done, Lego. Well done. Then we've got this side here with more stickers. And we come full circle to bring the van back here. Uh, this top panel comes out so that you can put shocker in the driver's seat as so. And then the main feature of this is that these panels open down and there's a gun that flips up that has flick fire missiles. Pretty cool feature. So when you turn the van around, if you close this, you can open that back gate like so. And inside the van, there are two boxes that have these stickers on the top. The stickers are not identical, which is something that I appreciate. Um, but if you look, this boxes say D-O-D-C, and from some things that I've seen, there is a possibility that that may mean Department of Damage Control, which would be something really interesting considering we've been told we might be getting a damage control component to the MCU. I guess we'll have to wait till the movie comes out to see, but that's definitely something cool. So those panels flip up like that. And on the inside, there are two little gadgets here that Shocker can use. This one looks like some kind of gun, and this looks like some kind of flashlight. But I guess we'll have to wait till the movie comes out to see exactly what they are. So that concludes my review of this Spider-Man Homecoming set. Do I think you should get it? Yeah, probably. I think that the minifigures really make up for a lot of this set, and the wings on Vulture were an amazing build. While the van might leave a lot to be desired, the minifigures here are amazing, you guys. So if you can pick up this set, I would highly recommend doing so. 
I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like the content, be sure to visit me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course on my page here at YouTube. Thanks so much for your time. This has been a review from LEGO Superheroes today, and as always, build on.